Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. For today's video, I have two special guests with me here today. Oh, <laughs> here's Sasha and here's my mom, Claudia. This is our little Bernie Doodle puppy. She's four years old, so she's not really a puppy anymore, but you know. For today's video, we're gonna be covering things that you should know before getting a dog or getting a puppy. Now, I would like to give a little disclaimer before we start. We are in no way saying that we are professional dog trainers in any way. This is just what we have learned and experienced through having our dog and through the hours of research that we have done on our own towards dog training. Sasha is almost four years old. She'll be four in September, and she is an AKC star puppy and AKC good citizen, which are both tests that you have to pass and she is also a certified therapy dog. Okay, so there's gonna be five different sections in this video. I'll go ahead and link the timestamps down below so that you can fast forward to whichever portion of the video that most interests you. Don't forget to like and subscribe because it doesn't hurt you and it doesn't hurt me. All right, so let's go ahead and dive on into the video. So for the first section, we're gonna be talking about what you need to expect before you even get your puppy. So the first tip is that you should do your research on the breeder that you plan on going to and know that your dog may not look exactly like the picture perfect model that is on their website of the breed. So number two is that their color changes a lot. So even if you get a puppy that has all those markings that you think you want, uh, likewise, do your research and see what those puppies from that breeder look like as an adult because they really, their markings can drastically change as they grow. All right, number three, the first several weeks of having a puppy is hard work, which is why God makes them cute. You have to watch them all the time. And if you're not watching your puppy, they really should be in a crate so that they're not getting into any mischief, not getting into things that you don't want them to be. It's a lot of work. You're gonna have to get up in the middle of the night to take them out to go to the bathroom, just like with a baby. You have to get up in the middle of the night to feed it and to you know, change its diaper. Same with dogs. You have to have the same expectation. It's a lot of work. All right, number four. Really super important uh, in the imprinting period, which is up until they're four months, but really I would suggest this up until they're a year. Touch every part of their body every day ears, nose, mouth, inside their mouth, paws, tail, back, stomach, all of it. Get them used to that. Uh, and that way, when they are older, they will be much more balanced adults. When they go to the veterinarian, they won't have any issues. They'll just allow people to touch them and not get skittish about that. Number five, if you are planning on getting a dog that is a large breed, your kennel is going to be ginormous. You need to have that in mind that once they're big, you are gonna have a huge amount of space taken up in your home and you need to prepare, like what room is this gonna be in? Am I okay with having this human-sized cage in the middle of our living room? <laughs> okay, number six is don't buy a tiny kennel for your puppy because they grow really super quickly and it's just better if you get that big giant kennel to begin with that has the partitions and allow the dog to grow into it. You'll save yourself a lot of money. All right, number seven is especially true of doodles, but I think it really can apply to all dogs, and that is that you really should expose your dog to all different kinds of sounds. Anything that makes a sound you want your dog to hear, basically, ah! so that... <laughs> so that when they become adults, they're not skittish of random noises. You need to expose them to it when they're young, but then continue exposing them to it. Just make sure that you are doing the most random things that just make a lot of noise. So number eight, take your puppy into as many places as you possibly can. Make sure, of course, that you wait until after they've had their shots, but expose them as much as you possibly can, as many different places as you can. All right, number nine is that socializing your puppy is so important. Just like when you have a kid, you would take your kid on play dates. You would have your kid interact with other children so that they have playmates. Make friends with people who also have dogs. Let your dogs just be dogs. Let them play out in the yard and just have a good time. All right, so this brings us to section two, which is training. All right, so the first thing that I would like to say about training is the kennel that we talked about earlier, that should never, ever, ever be used as punishment. Their crate, their kennel, is their happy, safe place. There's a lot of great information on the web about crate training, please check that out. All right, number two is specifically for if you're interested in getting a Bernadoodle. They are typically more stubborn than other doodles, but doodles in general are one of the easier breeds to train. So again, 
this goes into doing your research about what type of dog you want and how the training process is gonna go. Which leads to number three, make sure that whatever breed you pick aligns with your lifestyle. If you work all day and then you get home and you just want a dog that's gonna be happy to lay on the couch with you, please do not get a Border Collie because that is not gonna, that's just gonna frustrate the dog. So just do your research and make sure it matches. Number four is that it really is necessary to go to a dog trainer when you have a puppy, when you have just adopted a dog, and also, in case you didn't know already, dog training is not for the dog trainer to train your dog, it's for the dog trainer to train you how to train your dog. It is your responsibility to take what you learn in dog training go home and apply it every single day with your dog so that there's consistency and they're learning it at home. All right, so number five, and this was very true in our family, is that the dog training is not just for one person. The dog training is for the whole family. Whoever lives in your household and is going to be communicating with the dog, that's who the training's for. When I come home from training during dinner, that's what we talk about is I share the information that I learned so that we are all consistent in using the same words and able to um, ask her for whatever we're wanting her to know and do. We're all saying it the same because consistency is key. All right, number six is that training should never stop. You should always be training up until the day that your dog goes to puppy heaven. Just doing something, not necessarily going to a professional trainer, but doing things throughout the day that activate their brain. All right, number seven, very important. Any behavior that you do not want to see in your adult dog, do not let your puppy get away with it. You don't want your 60 pound dog jumping on you, please don't let your seven pound puppy jump on you. Also, even if you have a small dog breed, it's still not cute when they jump. It's more a respect thing of other people who are gonna be around your dog. Like, it's just kind of rude. Get a grip on your dog. Oh. <laughs> All right, number eight is that there are opportunities to train your dog every day. You just kind of have to be aware of them and be looking for those opportunities. As an example, Sasha is downstairs and I'm going upstairs. So if I just want to use, uh, have a little training opportunity, I will put her in a sit down and stay at the bottom of the stairs. Make sure I really enforce the stay and then I'll go upstairs, do whatever I'm doing, come back down, she's waiting for me, and I reward her. That is a super easy training thing. I was already going upstairs doing it anyway, so yeah. Okay, number nine, also very similar to number eight, is another training thing, potty training. When they are little and you teach them to potty, you go outside with them. Every time they go outside, you go out with them or you're at an open window and the second they go potty, you make it like it is the most exciting thing that has ever happened. Even as they get older, even she's almost four, every time I see her potty, I say, good job, good potty. The benefit of that is that now, if we're going out somewhere, I can say, go potty, and she goes potty on command. All right, and number 10, this is the last one in our training section, and I want you to listen to this very carefully. It is never, okay to hit your dog. I'm gonna say it again. It is never okay to hit your dog. They cannot understand and connect the dots between, oh, I did this and they didn't like it and that's why they're hitting me. They can't make that connection like a human can. That means nothing to them. You have actually just broken part of your relationship with your dog. You have instilled fear in them of you. You've broken your trust with them. There's just a new barrier there that doesn't need to be there. Going along with that, positive reinforcement really is the way that you should be going with your dogs. Negative enforcement, again, they just can't make the connection. So catch them doing good things, catch them doing the things that you want them to do and praise them up for it. And that's the way that you're gonna get a great dog. All right, so section number three, places to take your dog. When I first started training Sasha and I wanted to take her to a lot of different places, what I would do is I would just call stores, all kinds of different places, and ask if it was okay for me to bring my puppy. Make sure that if you're doing that, that your dog is fully potty trained. All right, so I'm just gonna go ahead and rapid fire list off these different places just so you can have some ideas. Libraries, the mall, the vet office and not just for their appointments but take them a couple times a week and just take them into the waiting area so that they get used to that place and they're not scared of it drug stores tj maxx old navy marshall's home depot and lowe's tractor supply company hardware stores furniture stores the beach pet stores obviously playgrounds nurseries you know garden centers school bus stops and then 
grocery stores. A lot of places won't allow you in, but if you are on the outside of a grocery store, there's a lot of traffic coming in and out. Really great area for training your dog. All right, now the fourth section we are about to be covering is the whole grooming aspect. And now this is going to really be directed towards people with doodles just because that's what we have and that's what we're used to having to deal with. But this can also apply to other long haired dogs as well. So number one is that there is a lot of at home brushing and combing necessary to keep your dog tangle free. Typically we try for three times a week, maybe even more if it's raining. I'll go ahead and in the description box, I will list off these really great tools that we have that we use for Sasha's hair. All right, number two, doodles still shed. No matter what someone says, they do still shed. May not be a lot, but there's a little bit of hair that comes out. So just have that awareness. Number three is that grooming needs vary depending on your dog's hair. So within the breed, so Sasha's a Bernadoodle, there are Bernadoodles with completely different hair type than she has. There are dogs with super curly hair like mine. There are some with wavy hair and there are some with like way more straight hair, more like a Bernese mountain dog. So it really just depends. You really just have to do your research about your dog's specific hair type and what the needs are. Number four, learn how to pluck your long eared dogs inner ear hair. There's a lot of videos out there. These type of dogs are very prone to um, getting infections in their ears because mm -hmm. their long ears and the hair uh, traps moisture. So you can help prevent that with proper ear maintenance. Number five, grooming is expensive. The bigger the dog, the bigger the bill. So True. have that in mind before you get your dog. And it's also not optional. And a side note, a lot of people will be extremely angry when their dog goes into the groomer and comes out looking like a shaved rat, but that is just proof of not enough home care towards the hair. There has to be at home brushing and combing, not just when you take your dog to the groomer. All right, number six, doodles mouths get nasty. Your groomer can help you with that and they can shave the beard shorter and it gives it a little bit different look, but just know that that is a thing. All right, that's it for the tips in the grooming section, but we will go ahead and list some really good resources down in the description box below. There's a great doodle grooming article that everyone should read if you have a doodle. It's so important and will just give you an understanding of what groomers have to go through in terms of keeping the doodle tangle free. And the last section of this video is just some miscellaneous advice and tips that we have before we conclude the video. Number one is that physical exercise is so important. Just make sure that your dog, whatever breed you get, is getting the amount of exercise that it needs. All right, number two is that dogs requires a lot of mental stimulation. So in addition to the exercise that they need, they also need to be challenged. So um, just the training that we talked about earlier in the video, continual training is great. And it doesn't have to be long. Five minutes, five times a day is like the perfect amount to have as your goal. Like just like we were talking about earlier in the video, mom has Sasha sit down, stay before she goes upstairs. Maybe she goes upstairs for five minutes. Sasha needs to stay there for five minutes. That would count as five minutes of training time. And you didn't even really have to do anything. Just looking for those good opportunities as much as you can. Number three is that doodles, specifically, and there are other breeds as well, but doodles specifically need to be around their people. If you are a single mom or dad of this dog and your job keeps you away for almost all of the day and you're not able to spend time with your dog, your dog will not do well. They might not show any outward signs of not doing well, but it is not good for their mental health. They really thrive being around people. So make sure when you get a dog, that their needs align with your lifestyle. All right, number four, and this is a weird little random thing, but know that the Zoomies is a real thing and it's completely normal. It's these like random bursts of energy where the dogs are like running around like crazy. You cannot get in their way and you really shouldn't stop it because it, it is literally something that they have to get out of their bodies. So mm. um, it occurs more in puppies, but a lot of dogs, Sasha still has it as an adult. She, at least probably twice a week, she'll still go in the backyard and have the zoomies. And then she comes in and she's completely exhausted and it's fantastic. All right, you guys, that is it for this video. We really hope that you enjoyed it. And if there's anything that you still have questions about, feel free to leave them in the comments below and we will try to get back to you with our best answer or even other resources that we have found useful for whatever you're inquiring about. All right, so don't forget to hit like and subscribe because it doesn't hurt you and it doesn't hurt me. Yes, ma'am. <laughs>
Thank you guys again so much for watching and have a blessed day. Bye. Bye.